Hi everyone, Aaron here for Zolotech and yesterday Microsoft had a Surface event where it showed a bunch of new products. It updated some existing products and even showed us some future products as well. And I was able to get my hands on some of them, so let's talk about the first two and then we'll talk about what else they showed later on. I was able to check out the Surface Pro 7 and the new Surface Laptop 3. They're both very nice pieces of hardware, and as you can see, it looks basically the same as before, but now has the 10th generation Intel CPUs inside of them. They range from $749 to $2299 and have the dock connector, just like you would expect to charge the device or use an external dock. And then also the kickstand is there. Of course, it's the same as last year. And probably one of the favorite things that's still there is the expandable memory using micro SD. So all of this is really nice, but they've added USB C. So now we have one USB a port and one USB C port. So this is really nice. It's something we've all been asking for. It also comes in this matte black color along with the magnesium I showed you earlier. Now there are two new surface type cover colors and this is poppy red and it looks pretty nice. It's very vibrant and looks almost orange. And then we also have ice blue with matching accessories. So you can see here's the matching poppy red pen for the surface pro seven. It, it looks great. It's almost a cobalt orange. Now with the new surface laptop three, you have 13.5 inch and 15 inch with new colors and pricing 999 to 2799. And you can get Alcantara on the palm rest. Or if you really don't like that, you can have aluminum in this new sandstone color or the magnesium slash platinum color that we had before. The trackpad has also gained some size. It's only clickable at the bottom though, not at the top. And it works really great. And then of course we have probably the best in class keyboard, the surface keyboard. It's great and it hasn't changed. Now here you can see both side by side. They look great. The new matte black color is great as well. And they have USB C just like the surface pro seven. So one USB a USB C and then a headphone jack as well. And this is great for many people. You'll see it's a very clean design. There's nothing on the bottom, but it's already got a bunch of fingerprints. And then on the other side, we have that surface connector. So this is used for charging and it will also fast charge up to 80% in one hour. So that's new on the surface laptops. Now, the other thing Microsoft said is there is no gasket around the displays. So it's just glass. It's built strong enough and it shouldn't be a problem. And it looks really clean. It's the same touch screen that pretty much everyone loves and it's pretty high resolution. So overall it's great. Now the 15 inch model is probably the one I like the most. It's like a MacBook almost, but does not have speaker cutouts on the side, but maintains that great keyboard. But what sets it apart is a new Ryzen CPU. So you have the 10th gen Intel in the 13.5 inch and you have the choice of a Ryzen five or Ryzen seven in the 15 inch along with Vega nine or Vega 11 graphics. Now I ran a couple benchmarks. This is on the read and write speeds. I was only getting about 700 megabytes per second write speed and then read speed. I was getting about 897 megabytes per second. It's not the greatest, but this is the base model of the 15 inch. The only other benchmark I could actually run was a Cinebench. So you can see here's the actual Ryzen 5 Microsoft Surface Edition, which scored 1440 as far as the CPU benchmark. That's not phenomenal. It's close to what an, a Core i5 is doing if we look down here. So it's about a Core i5 to Core i7 CPU. I was not able to run any graphic tests though. I think most people that are looking for a thousand dollar plus laptop will be very happy with these and they are now user serviceable. So not only do we have these new ports, the USB C and just more connectivity, but we also have the ability for Microsoft to change out the hard drive. If we ask them to, there's supposed to be special tools to be able to open these devices up now for long time service. Now, the other product they actually showed that I was not able to get my hands on is the new surface pro X. This is a super thin tablet that also has a new Microsoft and Qualcomm partnered chip in it. It's called the Microsoft SQ one chip, and it has a lot of AI neural networks in it and should be really interesting as a competitor to the, the iPad pro and maybe some other tablets out there as well. So those are available for pre-order. They don't come out until about November or so. So if I can get my hands on one of those, I will, and I'll share it with you with an unboxing and things like that. Now the two products that Microsoft showed off that everyone was kind of blown away by and kind of questioning as well is the new surface Neo and the surface duo. And the surface Neo is a dual screen foldable tablet. 
the screen doesn't fold, but it's got two separate screens. They didn't say a whole lot about it. They didn't say what specs are in it other than that it's Intel and that it's a kind of interesting platform that's running a new version of Windows 10 called Windows 10 X. Now, the other thing they showed off was the Surface Duo, and this is essentially an Android device that's got two separate screens, but also has a, a tight integration between Microsoft and Google. So this should be really interesting in the future. It runs a Qualcomm Snapdragon dragon processor and it also will run every android app so it looks like windows but it's not exactly windows it's really interesting and i'm i'm looking forward to it but that's not coming out along with the neo and duo those don't come out until next year around this time so we won't see those until holiday 2020 but i'm looking really forward to those and then they also released Surface Buds, and these are in-ear Surface Buds that are pretty expensive, about $249. They're not available yet, and they allow you to translate languages and even control PowerPoint with them. So it's kind of interesting. I'm not sure I would understand using it for that, but if they sound great, that's one thing they do look a little different, but so did AirPods when those were first announced. But let me know what you think about all of these products in the comments below. Which one is your favorite? And what do you think about these folding phones? If you haven't subscribed already, please subscribe. And if you enjoyed the video, please give it a like. As always, thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.